Web developer versus DevOps engineer. Who do you think gets paid more? According to a report by Dice, web developers get paid around eighty-seven thousand dollars per year, whereas a DevOps engineer makes around hundred thirty-six thousand dollars. Now there are thousands of videos covering web development on YouTube, but there are not many that cover the other higher-paying tech skills. In this video, we'll cover five such high-paying tech skills. Before we begin. I'm not saying that learning web development or other popular skills that you hear about is a bad choice. There are good reasons why they are so popular, and salary is not the only thing that you should consider when picking a technology. There are other factors to consider like ease of learning, your background, and future prospects. Having said that, supply and demand determine your value in the job market. If an employer has a lot of candidates that know a particular technology, it can choose to pay them lower. So knowing the areas which have supply and demand mismatch can help you find hidden opportunities. And that's what I want to help you with in this video. At number 5, we have Go programming language. Imagine a language that is as easy to learn as Python but as powerful as C++. That's Go. Go, also known as Golang, is a relatively new programming language created by Google in 2009. It has quickly gained popularity among developers due to its simplicity, efficiency, and versatility. Go is a general-purpose programming language, which means that it can be used for a variety of tasks, from building web services to cloud-native applications. Go can do it all. Go has built-in support for concurrency, which is the ability to run multiple tasks simultaneously. This makes it ideal choice for developing high throughput and low latency systems. Go can help you get jobs like cloud engineer and backend engineer. But how much can you expect to get paid if you know Go? According to the same Dice report that I mentioned earlier, programmers who know Go can make around $145,000 per year. Go also ranks sixth among the skills with fastest growing salary. If you remember from earlier, I did say that Go is as powerful as C++. Well, that is not completely true. While Go is faster than most other modern languages. it still cannot match the performance of c++ that's because at the end of the day go uses a garbage collector for memory management this is done to make a programmer's life easier but it comes at the cost of performance to truly match the performance of c++ we have rust at number 4 in the world of low level programming rust stands out as a rising star when the speed of execution beats all other requirements for example in operating system kernels or game development Rust is the preferred modern choice. Rust ensures memory safety through its ownership and borrowing system. This means that code is immune to memory leaks and other common programming pitfalls. Rust is constantly ranked among the most loved programming languages in recent times. So how much does it pay to know Rust? If you have Rust in your skill set, you can expect to make around $137,000 per year. Moving on, at number 3, we have Docker and Kubernetes. If you are a DevOps engineer, you would already know what Docker and Kubernetes is. But for others, let me explain real quick. Imagine that you are a chef and you have just perfected your grandma's secret lasagna recipe. You want to share it with the world, but you also want to make sure it tastes exactly the same no matter where it's cooked. That's where Docker comes in. Docker is like a portable kitchen that lets you package up your entire cooking process, the ingredients, the utensils, the oven temperature and everything. You can package it all up into a neat little container. This container and its copies can then be shipped to any kitchen in the world, and the lasagna will taste exactly the same as if you made it yourself. In the software world, Docker does the same thing for applications. It lets developers package up their code, libraries and dependencies into containers, which can then be run on any computer without worrying about compatibility issues. This makes it very easy to share and deploy applications and that's why Docker has become so popular. If Docker is the portable kitchen, Kubernetes is the catering company that acts as the central coordinator, ensuring that all the kitchens are working together seamlessly. In the software world, Kubernetes automates the deployment and management of containerized applications. Kubernetes would restart failed containers, scale the application up or down, and roll out new versions of the application. That's too much information. Let's get to the good part. How much do DevOps skills like Docker and Kubernetes pay? You can expect somewhere around $139,000. As we discussed earlier, Kubernetes automates the management of containerized applications. But where do these applications actually run? These applications run on a group of servers or nodes which is also called Kubernetes cluster. And these servers would usually exist in cloud. which is what we have at number 2 AWS GCP and Azure are some of the most popular cloud providers they provide services like Google Kubernetes engine or Amazon Elastic Kubernetes service that can help you manage your Kubernetes cluster but these are not the only services they provide if you look at AWS These are some of the services AWS offers. GCP and Azure would also have their own versions of these services. Each of these services does a specific thing. For example, 
Amazon EC2 lets you rent virtual servers on cloud. AWS Lambda lets you run your code on the cloud without worrying about maintaining and scaling your servers. So when I say learn cloud, what I actually mean is to read about different services available on cloud and their use case. When should you use which service? How to configure and use the popular cloud services? To learn all these things, you can do a cloud certification. All cloud providers including AWS, GCP and Azure offer these certifications. With cloud skills, you can expect to get paid around $145,000. At the top, we have MapReduce. Imagine that you have a massive pile of books and you need to count how many times a specific word appears across all of them. If the number of books is very large, the task would be very difficult. And that's where we need MapReduce. Think of MapReduce as two-stage process, mapping and reducing. In the mapping stage, you divide the work among many servers also called helpers. Each helper takes a book, reads it, and creates a list of all the words and their counts. They then hand over these lists to the reducing stage. In the reducing stage, another set of helpers combines the list from mapping stage. They add up the count for each word across all the lists, giving you the final tally of how many times that word appears in the entire pile of bugs. MapReduce operation is done with the help of Hadoop. Hadoop is an open source framework that stores and processes large amount of data. And MapReduce is Hadoop's processing engine. If none of this makes any sense right now, that's fine. You you can read more about it if you plan to become a data engineer. In terms of salary, you can expect somewhere around $146,000. As I said in the beginning of this video, if you are not convinced about these 5 technologies and want to stick to safer time-tested options like Python, Java and JavaScript, that is completely fine. Watch this video where I share 3 roadmaps to learn Python, Java and JavaScript. My name is Sahil and I'll see you in the next one.